What's up everybody, TCM here back with another video and today we're going to be focusing on self-improvement. More specifically, a lesson I've learned in the last week. So last week I released a video on ethical hacking with Python and this video was about making a Wi-Fi password stealer to steal passwords off of a Windows machine. Now the code that I wrote was 100% original and it was one of those things that I challenged myself to write this code simply because I didn't want to take from a tutorial online and then present that code either as my own or even use somebody else's. I wanted to challenge myself to write it and to be authentic, which I feel a lot of YouTubers fall short on. So in that process of trying to be authentic, I wrote questionable code. I wouldn't say it was terrible. It was pretty bad, but it still functioned. It still did everything that I needed to do. However, I'm not a developer, I'm not a coder, and there were some improvements that were recommended to me. More specifically, our developer at TCM Security, Evan, told me that, hey, you overcomplicated this pretty significantly. And if you're interested in making this better, here's an XML parser that is actually built into Python. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're actually gonna go and review the code from last time, talk about where we could improve, and then improve the code. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to take our old Python Wi-Fi stealer and improve it. We're gonna make it stealthier, we're gonna make it less complex, and we're gonna make it more efficient with the amount of lines of code we have and the code blocks that we actually write. So we're gonna take a quick word from our sponsor. As always, if you like the video, please do hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. So I'll see you after this short ad break as we break down the new Python code. Today's video is brought to you by Keeper Security. Keeper protects your organization's passwords with an ultra secure and easy to use vault your employees will love. Keeper enables your employees to securely create and share strong passwords and is the highest rated product in the industry. As an example of how Keeper Security works, take this TCM Security Academy sign up page. Here I've got my name and my email address. Now I want to create a password, but I don't want to always use the same password that I create. So if I click into the password box, Keeper automatically populates this and generates a strong password for me. As you can see, I have a password length of 20 here, but I can actually increase it to 100 if I wanted to. And I can copy that, I can randomize it, I can tell it A to Z, 0 to 9, special characters, whatever I want in here. I can copy that and I can even fill this in and paste this. And then I can sign up with an incredibly long password. Another cool feature is the vaulting system. Now I can come up to the vault and retrieve my password or if it knows the website that I'm going to and I go to log in, it'll autofill my password and sign me in all without having to press a single button. It's that awesome. So to get Keeper Security, follow the link in the description below and receive a free three-year personal plan of Keeper's award-winning consumer password manager. Let's quickly cover what the script was doing. Now, if you want a full detailed explanation, you can watch the previous video from the channel where we go in and actually code this and walk through it in detail. But here we are doing our imports and we are also using a stealer URL. This is where the data is sent back to. We're actually going to keep this in our new script. When we come through, we are generating a file or creating a file called passwords.txt. In that file, we store our Wi-Fi name and password and we send that back to this web URL. In order to do that, we are creating a bunch of empty lists that we store data into. First of all, we get files generated. We run a Windows command here. Those XML files have our SSID name and our SSID password. So we had empty lists for those as well. In order to fill those lists, we identified the correct XML file that we were going to be needing, put that into one of our empty lists for the Wi-Fi files, and then we went through those files and we started pulling down the XML data. We were looking for the name and the key material lines in that XML data. So with that, the name corresponds to the SSID and the key material corresponds to the password of that SSID. So basically what we were doing was pulling out the SSID and the password, putting it into passwords.txt that was already created up at the top, and then we were sending passwords.txt out in a post request. Now we're going to improve on this. We're going to get rid of the file creation. In fact, I'm going to delete it right now. We're not going to create any files on our end, and we're only going to create one list. So what we're going to do is use an XML parser like our friend Evan suggested. In order to do that, we need to actually import the XML parser, and there is an XML parser built into Python. 
So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the imports up top and just move OS, sys, and requests over. And then we're going to import the XML parser. So we're going to say import XML dot e tree dot element tree as et so we're just going to shorten that down to et so this is going to do xml parsing for us i'm going to walk through how that works here in just a second we are going to keep our stealer url so we can go ahead and leave this in here if you followed along from last time if not i'll leave a link to this in the description below i'll put this on github so you can use this file and follow along as well we're also going to keep our Wi-Fi files list because we still need to generate and store Wi-Fi files in a list, but we're also going to have a payload dictionary. So instead of calling this list, we're going to call this list and dictionaries or dicks. No jokes, please. All right. And we're going to come in here and we're just going to set this dictionary to SSID as the key. And then we'll have an empty value pair for that. We'll also have another one for key value of password and we'll leave that empty as well. So what's going to happen is we're going to go through and we're going to fill this payload that we're going to send to this URL and we're going to fill this dictionary with the SSIDs that we gather and the passwords that we gather. We are still going to use Python to execute a Windows command. This Windows command again will export XML files related to the Wi-Fi profiles that are stored on the machine. So this does not need to change. We also do need to grab the path of our current working directory. That way we know where the file is getting stored for this Wi-Fi file and we can pull from that. So here's what's going to happen. We are going to come down here and do the hackies, but I'm going to replace this a little bit because we're going to create a couple of extra sections here. So we're going to append Wi-Fi XML files. This should be a capital F XML files to the Wi-Fi files list. All right, and in order to do that, all we need to do is this first part right here. So for file name in OS lister path, we grab our path here. We're gonna go ahead and grab any Wi-Fi file that ends with XML that is generated by this process here. And then we're going to append that to the Wi-Fi files list that we created and that's empty up here. We're going to also parse through these files. So this is where the XML parsing comes into play. So we're going to parse Wi-Fi XML files. And in reality, we don't really need anything that we put in here. We're going to delete all of this. We're going to rewrite the parser. So what we're going to say is we're going to do for file in Wi-Fi files. And that is the list that we just appended to here. We're going to go ahead and declare a few variables. So we're going to declare tree, which is equal to et.parse files. So we're going to parse the files and store that into a tree. This et, remember, is the imported XML parser. So we're going to parse through that. We also need a root. So root is going to be equal to root. And when we declare root, if we go to our XML file, we're saying, hey, here's the root of the file, all this data in here, okay? We've got all this data in here and we need to pull it in an index format. So for example, in the root, if I pull root here of root zero, index zero, it's gonna pull out the name. Index one would pull out SSID config. Index one of zero would pull up this SSID. One of zero of zero would pull up this hex. And I hope you can follow along with what I'm saying, but I'm going to show you another example here in a second. So if we want the name or the SSID, we need to pull of the root, root zero. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say SSID is equal to root zero. And we want that in the text format. So we're going to pull the text of this here. So all we're pulling out is please don't hack me. And if we wanted the password, we're going to say password is equal to root. And watch this. It's 4012.txt. So why? Let's go back to the XML file and count this out. Let's say that we need to get to this key material. All right, we need to count here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
Okay, here's four. Now from within this, we need to go down a level. So we need zero. Okay, well, we need to go down another level. We've got one, two. Okay, actually zero, one, I should say. I'm sorry. So we got four, zero, one. And then we come in here and we say zero, one, two. So if we look back at this, we got four, zero, one, two. We're going down levels and we're pulling the text out of that. So that's all we're doing is parsing and we're parsing through different indexes. So in this index here, we're going to the first one, second, third, fourth, to finally pull down our text, which is our password. And then we're just going to append to the dictionary of payload that we created. So we want to append the SSID and we're going to say dot append and we're going to put SSID in here. We're also going to say payload of password. And I missed a bracket here. We're going to append this and we're going to call this password. All right. And then one more thing that we want to do here is this is going to create files on the system. As we pull this down, the netsh command that we're running here, that does generate these Wi-Fi files. So in order to be stealthier, what we're going to do is do an os.remove and we're going to do file. So that's going to delete the file that's created. And as we parse through this list, it deletes the XML files, leaving no trace of an XML file on the system. So the last thing that we're going to do is we are going to send off the hackies now. So instead of using an open file to send a request, we're going to do something a little different. First of all, we're going to send a request. So we're going to say r equals request.post. And we're going to give it the URL that we provided up at the top. We're going to call the parameters of this of format equals JSON. And we're going to say data is equal to payload string here, which we don't have that yet. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So up here, we're going to go ahead and make a variable of payload string. And the issue is if we were to send this in its current format, the password if sent over in having any special characters is going to be same thing with the SSID, by the way, but it's going to be URL encoded. So we're going to see something like percent %27 or something like that back in the password. And we don't want that. So we want to make sure that this is not URL encoded. So we're going to do a join command and we're going to join together the key value pairs. So we're going to do that with a join method. And what this does is it's going to strip out any of the URL encoding that we do. So this is the format that we're doing. Uh, did I look this up on Stack Overflow? Indeed, I did. So we do for KV, just like that, key value in payload.items. All right, so that's that. We're going to comment out, send the hackies, because I didn't there. And this looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and go back over this really quick. So we've got all of our appropriate imports up here. We've got the import for the XML parser as well. We have our stealer URL, which will receive the payload. We have the Wi-Fi files empty list and the payload empty dictionary. We're going to run a Windows command that generates an XML file, but also exports any stored Wi-Fi passwords and SSIDs related to those passwords or vice versa. In order to do that, we have to get the current working directory. So we set a path variable. We then find all the XML files that were generated by this command and append them to our Wi-Fi files list. From there, we parse through those XML files that are stored in our Wi-Fi files list using the XML parser. We store our SSID in a variable and our password in a variable. And then we append that to our dictionary. Once that's said and done, we're going to remove our file. And then once we got all of our files extracted and our dictionary has our SSIDs and passwords, we're going to go ahead and send that over via a post request to our URL. So let's take a look at it and see how it works. All right, new and improved Steeler script. If I come in here and I just type in Python Steeler.py, hit enter, and bam, it took about a whole second to send over the SSID of please don't hack me and the password of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
If you have multiple SSIDs, it will just comma that out and comma out the password as well. So your first or your zero index here would be corresponding to the zero index over here. One would be corresponding to one and so forth. So hopefully this was informative for you. It just goes to show that there's always room for improvement. Just because something functions properly doesn't mean that it can't be improved. And now our code doesn't write a password to a file and leave that on a machine, nor does it leave the XML files on the machine. This is a lot more stealthier. And for those of you who might ask, hey, what happens if this is a Python file and they don't have Python on their computer? Well, guess what? You can run this as an executable. I just tried it worked out perfectly fine and it didn't get detected by antivirus at all. So this just goes to show again that there's always room for improvement in your coding. I'm not perfect by any means and I think this looks a lot cleaner. So again, I thank Evan, our developer, for challenging me to write better code for teaching me about XML parsers because I really didn't know that they existed in Python and this ended up looking a lot better than it did before. So that's it for this video. Until the next one, my name is The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me.